Clap your hands and welcome all of those that are watching online. Hey, thank you so much for joining us. We're so glad that you're tuning in. Whether you're tuning in on Facebook Live or, or YouTube or at a later time, I want you to know we are praying for you. All my friends, my friends just had a baby. They're watching online today. Hey, thank you so much for uh, watching online. Congratulations on your new baby. Uh, we're excited that he's healthy and that he's in this world. Um, I need my sermon notes. Can you pass me my sermon notes? That will help. Praise God. Thank you, Pastor Terry. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to uh, Acts chapter 19. It's our foundational verse for this sermon series called Pursue the Goose. We have had just an amazing time uh, during this series. If, it's, uh, if you've been benefited at all from this series, you can always watch them on our website, focus.church slash watch, or on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash focuschurch. All the messages are available there in high definition. One of the reasons why I wear a suit today. I'll look back on this years from now and say, I'm glad I wore a suit on that day. Acts chapter 19, when you have it, say amen. <clears throat> when Apollos was in Corinth, Paul traveled through the interior regions where he reached Ephesus on the coast where he found several believers. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed, he asked them. No, they replied, we haven't even heard there is a Holy Spirit. What a sad condition of the early church that they would have believed but not experienced the Holy Spirit. And I would hate for that same condition to make its way into the culture of our church. I would hate for that condition to be your condition today. And one of the objectives of this series has been to ensure that all of us have been baptized and experienced the power of his presence. If you've experienced the baptism of the Spirit, can I get an amen? Turn with, back with me to Acts chapter 1. Where did all of this begin? Acts is the historical account of the first church, the early church. And here we're going to go from chapter 19, which was later on, decades into it. We're going to go backwards in time to the very beginning. Where does all this come from? Where does all this stem from? And here's what it says, Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you will receive, come on church, this is a participating church. But you will receive, come on, say it again. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses telling people about me. What's the purpose of the power is not to promote your pride. The purpose of the power is not to impress anyone. The purpose of the power is so that you, we together can be his witnesses to people who have never seen or heard. And you will be my witnesses telling people about me, not about how good you are, not about how God has gifted you, but telling people about him, Jesus, me, everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. I want to talk to you today about power in a sermon that I've titled Goosebumps. Let's pray. Father, help us in the next few moments as we dive deep into your word. Help us, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. It is possible to clean up the yard with a rake. It's possible. It's possible to take a rake. Anybody uh, rake your yard in the fall with a rake? Anybody still using a rake? You know, you know what a, rake, a garden tool, rake. But I would hate for you not to know that there's another way. Do you know that there's another way to get rid of leaves? There's a more powerful way to get rid of leaves. 
I've seen this guy with the backpack, Byron. He's always out here Thursdays and Fridays making it look so nice on the property. And he's got this gas-powered leaf blower. I think churches do a disservice handing people the rake of Jesus without the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, you can get the job done by just being saved. You can. But why not get all of God? Why not experience the power? As a matter of fact, I I came across a a few pictures of people who had experienced the power of a leaf blower on their faces. Uh, So this is pretty cool. I don't know if they have those pictures or not uh, to be able to show them. But uh, basically, this artist went through and um, this is leaf blower to the face capturing pictures. That's what you look like when you get the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. You don't want to rake to the face. This is what uh, an artist put together. These are just stills of people getting the power of a leaf blower. I'd like to talk to you today about the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to talk to you today about the potential, not only uh, that is on you, but that God can use through you. I think it's one thing to have Jesus and the Holy Spirit in you. I think it's a whole other thing for him to use you and to do things through you. And that's when you see someone operating in their spiritual gift. Have you ever seen somebody just operating in their gift? It gives you goosebumps. If I got up here and I started trying to sing like uh, Chris, I've tried before when no one was here. And it's not, it would not give you goosebumps. It would give you other things, heart attack, things like that. When you see people operate in their gift... That's the power of God through them. And I believe that the power of God did not select just a few people, but I believe it's for everyone. I believe everyone has a gift from God. There are three gifts that have come from God that I'd like to teach on first, and then we're going to get into the preaching segment of this service. And I trust that you came prepared to respond to the preaching because I practiced this closing illustration last night, and I hope that it works. If anything, I got saved, so that's fine. (laughs) The first gift that God gives is the gift of eternal life. This is salvation. This is a free gift for you, and he separated the gifts so that you wouldn't think that you could do anything to receive it. This is a free gift. Romans 6.23 says, for the wages of sin is death. But the free gift, I love free stuff. Free 99, baby. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The reason it is free is because you didn't have to do anything to receive it. That's the beautiful thing about coming into church. Uh, Paul, one of our elders, said this the other day. He said, I didn't have to pay a cover charge to come into the presence of God. Why? Because it's a free gift that is available for all of you. If you haven't received the free gift of salvation, then you're limiting God because he can't use your spiritual gift that he wants to give you if you haven't first received the free gift that you do nothing about. The gift of grace is so nice. Then the second gift is the gift of the Holy Spirit. The gift of the Holy Spirit is is the second gift. Now this is what God gives to you. He saves you, then he gives you the gift of the Holy Spirit, which we talked about last week. Uh, Acts 1, 4 through through 5 says, Once when he was eating with them, he commanded them, Do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift. It's a gift, okay? You don't have to work for it. And he promised. As I told you before, John baptized with water, but in just a few days, today is that day, I will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So you got the free gift of salvation that is the gift of eternal life. You don't have to do anything to to receive that. Then you have the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's something that he he sends down. The third gift is the gift of spiritual gifts. All right, Not gifts like the little things on Facebook, not G-I-F. We're talking about G-I-F-T, gifts. Gifts. The gift of spiritual gifts. Now the difference between the gift of the Holy Spirit and the gift of spiritual gifts is the Holy Spirit is on you, but your spiritual gift works through you. I've seen people operating in gifts before, and I thought to myself, man, oh man. And it's not just what you think it is. It's not just preaching. There are 27 different gifts listed in the New Testament, and I believe as culture changes, God puts a new grace and a new gift on people. There wasn't a gift of accounting software back in the Bible days, so it didn't show up in the New Testament. But I've seen people love Excel like I love preaching. 
That's a gift. Let me tell you right now, I don't like Excel. That's a curse to me, but a gift to many. I've seen people organize and administer events and rally groups of people. I could, I don't, I just, I got my gift and I stay in my gift lane. But I've gotten goosebumps from seeing people present to me a plan of action for an outreach. I've said, dear God, they worked hard on that. And it came easy to them. What looks hard to others comes easy to you. Chances are that's your gift. If it's effortless to you, then it's probably a gift that was given by God. I, I, I love to preach. As a matter of fact, I would preach for free. Don't get any ideas. <laughs> I would preach for free. Why? Because it's not that it's, 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 doesn't, it's, not that it's easy, but I love it. It's, it's the grace, the charisma, is, it means grace gift. The word charisma, when you say charismatic, it just means that you're, you're operating in a grace gift. This, I love to, I would do this for free. What's hard is trying to lead and, and grow the church and strategize. I got to work for that. I got to work for that. But my, 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 my gifting, I, I love the microphone. Dude, give me a microphone, one person. I will scream until my veins pop out of my neck. Until my tie is loose and my suit is sweated through. Why? Because I, I know that this is my lane. But if you put me in a different position, you would be frustrated. If you put me trying to cook food for party with the pastor, ain't nobody joining this church. <laughs> they say, pastor, we got to change something. If you put me uh, trying to make sure that these chairs are symmetrical. We, we were having discussions as a staff yesterday about these chairs. Dear God, the room is not symmetrical, so the chairs are hard to get symmetrical, and they're hard to get. I said, you know what? Y'all handle it. I'm out here taking a string from this corner of the stage out there. I'm taking a string from the middle to the string. I'm trying my best. I'm sweating, right? I'm nervous about the chair management, and someone else comes in there and goes, I got it. They straighten it up. I'm like, that's exactly what we were thinking, but we just didn't have the gift to do it. Every single one of you has a gift. You do. I've seen it in operation many, many times. Pastor Jim Kelly, one of the former pastors here at this church, my pastor, my personal pastor, he has the gift of encouragement. You can never have coffee with Jim Kelly and be upset about anything in your life. It's impossible. It's impossible. He sees the greatness in you and he pulls it out in 30 minutes and is like, see you later, have a great week. I'm serious. It's his gift. It's his gift. My best friend, Dr. Michael Hudson. I, 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 I've FaceTimed him while he was at work. I can't FaceTime him while he's at work when, with patients, but while he's on his break. And he's talking about giving people stitches and operating and checking people for heart attacks in the emergency room. And I'm like, he talks about it like it's nothing. If you, he delivered a baby just a few days ago. He's just telling, we were at the gym. He's telling me about delivering this baby. I just delivered a baby. I just delivered a baby. As if it was just a walk in the park. That's his gift. God, God put it inside of him, and he was operating in the gift. My friend Ron Horn, when, he, when we put this flooring on the stage, I said, Ron, I, I don't want the green carpet on the stage anymore. I want, uh, I want a black stage flooring. He said, I got you. And, and it, it, you, what you see is the finished product. You don't see his gift in operation. He had a little napkin drawing. Then he had like a graphic design drawing. Then he had like a purchase order, a, a, a bill of materials. Then he had all these other things. Then he had to equip the team to come in. Then he like ordered the right paint so that it wouldn't uh, mess up too much. And then like there was so much operating. And I was just like, dear God, I'm so glad the church has blessed us with people that have gifts like that. Some of you, you're gifted to give. God has put you in places where, where you, have, you have received from God so much that he has equipped you to fund the kingdom. He's equipped you to, and, and it gives you so much joy when you give, not just money, but of your time and of your talent. That's your gift. And I don't know every single person's gift, but I know this, every single person has one. So what do we do with this gift? First of all, never sit on your gift for too long. I understand there needs to be seasons of rest and recovery. I understand that your last church abused your gift, so you came up in here guarded, and you didn't want to use your gift. Well, I want to pray that God would heal you from that abuse so that you can step into all that God has for you. I don't want you sitting on your gift for so long that you forgot that God used to use you in a powerful and mighty way. 
I met a lot of people that were so wounded from past experience that they stopped using their gift and the Spirit of God stopped not just coming on them but using through them. And I want you to use your gift in this church. Some of you, 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 you desire working with babies in the nursery. God bless you. Some of you can't wait to work and to pray over those babies and to corral those kids and to lead them into worship. You put me back there, we'd have a nightmare on our hands. We'd have to call an ambulance, have an ambulance on standby. I don't even know how y'all do it. And I have three of my own. Can I tell you, there's a grace gift on your life. The charisma, the grace gift is on your life. And if you're not using it, the kingdom of God is, is, is going without it. I want you to use your gift. I want you to use it. Here, here are a couple, a couple of steps that you need uh, to, to be thinking about. Uh, first, let me just read 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 11. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit is the source of them all. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but it is the same God who does the work in all of us. A spiritual gift is given to each of us, notice not some of us, each of us, so that we can help each other. To one person, the Spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. That's why we have elders in this church. Uh, to another, the same Spirit gives a message of special knowledge. Sometimes the Lord will speak to you something about someone that you couldn't have known otherwise unless the Lord said it. You need to use that gift. Darren Ford has a great gift. He checks on me all the time. He said, the Lord told me to pray for you. Something's up. How can I pray for you? Spirit, the same Spirit gives a great faith to another. Some people believe God for more for this church, and sometimes I can even muster up. They're like, Pastor, we need more parking spaces. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Pastor, we got to go to four services. I'm like, okay. You have to preach then. <laughs> to someone else, to one, the, the, the one spirit gives the gift of healing. Dr. Ryan Denny, when he talked today, some of you received healing in your heart. That's his gift. I don't, I, he got to use that thing, and he does. To one person, uh, to, he gives one person the power to perform miracles. We believe in a miracle working God. If you came in here for, with a need today, I believe you can leave without it. I believe you can leave without it. And another, the ability to prophesy. This is speaking into what God will do. Or what God might do. He gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is of, from the Spirit of God or from another spirit. Y'all, uh, Some of y'all have a lot of discernment on that. Pastor, that message today, a little this, a little that, you know. <laughs> Still, another person is given the ability to speak in unknown languages. This is speaking in tongues. Maybe you've heard of this before. Uh, there is two types of manifestations, I believe, of the Spirit. I believe there's a heavenly language that he gives to uh, all believers. And then I believe there's a gift of, of speaking in tongues, which is uh, a, a gift that can be used to edify the body. It must uh, come with an interpretation. Uh, that's why it says still another person, uh, uh, an while another is given the ability to interpret what is being said. So if that happens, know that this, if anybody ever uh, speaks in tongues in a service like this one, know that it has to come with an interpretation. It will never just be tongues. It will always come with an interpretation because 1 Corinthians uh, 4, 14 says that it must require an interpretation. Is that, um, it, is, it is the one and only spirit who distributes all of these gifts. He alone decides which gift each person should have. Now, there are more gifts than just these, but every single person has one. Are you grateful to have a spiritual gift today? Are you grateful to use that gift on a weekly basis here at Focus Church? When Will touches the keyboard, it is a gift. When John plays guitar, it is a gift. And I'm so glad that all of you have one. Because if we're all operating in our grace gift, this church would not be big enough. If you were operating in your grace gift, this church would not be big enough. So what do we do? What is a spiritual gift? Let me define it for you. A spiritual gift is a supernatural ability that God gives to each of his children so that together we can advance his purposes in this world. I'm going to read it one more time. I'm going to define a spiritual gift. A spiritual gift is a supernatural ability that God gives to each of his children so that together we can advance his purposes in this world. 
Together, our gifts are greater than they are alone. You better be glad that I'm not the only gift operating on a Sunday morning. The pastor that does everything is a limited church. A pastor that does one thing is an unlimited church. I only preach. Why? Because I know that God has given each of you the gift of, of, of prophecy, the gift of word of knowledge, the gift of being able to work with the kids, being able to develop leaders. There are so many gifts. So what do we do? How does this play out? Number one is this, is you have to desire the gift. You have to desire the gift. 1 Corinthians 14, 1 says, let love be your highest goal. So if you don't love, don't even desire the gift, is what he's saying. If you can't, you can't be angry and operate in your gift. You got to love God first. You got love must be your highest goal. If I, I, I met angry people trying to use their gift, and I'm like, if you just love God, then your gift will be good. And I've tried to use my gift in an angry spirit, and it doesn't work. People leave the church when I get angry because I'm not operating in my, I'm, I'm not making love my highest goal. I want people when they encounter my gift to first encounter the love and presence of God because then my gift can be used. But my gift cannot be used out of an angry spirit. It says in 1 Corinthians 14 to let love be your highest goal. We need to be a loving church. They'll, you'll never get the gift if you don't learn how to love. If you don't learn how to love, you'll never be. I want this to be the most loving, welcoming place on the planet. I want, the, I want you to feel the love before you ever feel anything else. The love of God and the love of his people. So we got to desire the gift. Desire, uh, this, you, you should also desire the special abilities the Spirit gives, especially the ability to prophesy. Here in this instance, he's correcting the church because they had gotten a little too much on the speaking in tongue side and not enough on the understandable teachings of the Bible and of what God was saying. So he's correcting them and saying, uh, let love be your highest goal. And then if you want any of the gifts, at least prophesy because it will be in a language that is understandable. At the time, he's correcting the church in Corinth. We believe in all the gifts. What he's saying here is to especially desire a gift that can edify the church. Don't let your past experience keep you from desiring the gift. Because if you lose your fire, you lose your desire. You like that little preacher term? Discover the gift. Desire the gift and discover the gift. What problem is your power here to solve? That's the question you need to ask yourself. What problem did God put me on this earth to solve? I've met people who have the ability to see a problem in this church that I never even knew existed. And I'm so grateful that not only are you uh, going to identify the problem, praise God, I like, oh, I got a bunch of those, uh, but not only that, he's put you here on this earth to solve it. It's one thing to say, I see it. It's another thing to say, I'll solve it. You're not operating in your gift when you just see it. You're operating in your gift when you solve it. Because I can tell you right now, we all can see the problems. We can all identify the issues. We can all see the gaps. It's very easy. It's carnal for us to go say, well, if that was pretty loud and they missed a note there. and that, Solve it. Don't just see it. If, if, if you see someone standing and they need a seat, don't just say, man, these ushers, they should really get on it. Solve it. Am I, am I preaching to anybody today? <laughs> Nobody want to be an usher in this church. Nobody got the gift of ushering. Come on. If you see it, you don't have to be an usher to solve it. Scoot to the middle, and it'll save them a ton, of, a ton of trouble. That's a very practical way for you to solve it. So scoot to the middle. Because when people come in later, they're always looking for a seat, and it's kind of weird for them to scoot by. If you see something, solve it. Don't just say it, but solve it. And I, I know this. I know that when you begin to solve the problems in the kingdom of God, your gift begins to be used in such an exponential way. It is, it is incredible when you desire and then discover the gift. Now, here, here's, here's, here's the cool thing. Desire the gift. Discover the gift. What problem am I here to solve? Uh, one of the ways that you can do that is by taking a spiritual gifts assessment on igettoserve.com. We have made a website called igettoserve.com, and on that site, you can take a spiritual gifts assessment. I think it's 60 questions. You can go through there, and you can find it, and um, you can then it'll email you all the results. And you'll be like, oh, that's kind of how I'm wired. It's pretty helpful if you're looking for a very practical way to handle this. The next thing is this, is to develop the gift. Develop the gift. Desire the gift, discover the gift, develop the gift. It's amazing how when you become successful at something, you stop praying about it. When things begin to go in your way, you, you begin to think that it's you. And you stop developing that which you're good at, and you stop praying for that which you think you're, you're put on earth to do. 
But successful people know that their gift could always be developed. I want to preach better next Sunday than I did last Sunday. The only way to do that is to have some sort of uh, learning experience in between Sundays about how to develop my gift. I don't want this service to be the best sermon I've ever preached. I, I look at myself 30 years from now, I'll be 60 years old. I got 30 years of development. I pray that when I preach when I'm 60, I'll look back at when I was 30 and say, man, you need to learn a lot. I, I, I want to develop the gift. These guys show up on Thursdays for hours. They don't just show up on Sundays to play for you, to play for the Lord, then for you, to lead you into worship. They show up on Thursdays. He's here during the week. I find him in the corners of the church. I'm oh, just developing the gift. Why? Because you have to develop that which God has put inside of you. You got to develop it. I think we've, we've, grown, we've grown tired and we're, we've stopped developing that which we know we're good at. That's pride speaking. That's pride saying, you don't need to develop that gift of preaching. You already got a growing church. Why would you need to get any better? They're already showing up. No, 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 no. I want to be the best preacher that I could be 30 years from now. And I got to learn a lot. I got to learn. So stick around <laughs> for 30 years. And, and, and come, come back in 30 years. I remember the first service, we were so nervous about the first service of our church. When I say nervous, I mean like, like dry heaving, you know, like in the back of the bathroom in this elementary school. I was like, uh, 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 I'm so nervous. We didn't know if anybody was going to show up. I mean, nobody, we didn't know nobody was going to show up. I remember, I remember praying to God, dear God, please just let one person show up. Like one person and a cat is all I need. As long as the, the cat can get saved, we'll be good. I remember I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't even come out. I wouldn't come out until the third song because I didn't want to, I wouldn't want to be discouraged. I didn't want to be discouraged. I, 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 I would peek through the pipe and drape at the elementary school and I'd be like, okay, there's two people here. It's good, it's good. Okay, I need two more, all right? And, and every single Sunday since then, I still have the same. It's not uh, nervousness like, oh God, am I gonna do good today? It's like, dear God, please let somebody's life be changed today. Please, I, I, I need to develop a, a sensitivity to the Spirit. God, please let, let the gift of God that is on my life be used and reflected. Not me, but God. And when you come to usher, when you come to work in kids' ministry, when you come to greet, you need to have that same sense of expectation that says, Dear God, please use me today. If anything, God, please let me have one conversation with one person who's going through a hard time so that they can know the true power of the presence of God. Yeah. Discover the gift, develop the gift. And then the last one is deploy the gift. Don't just develop in secret and never get, never get it to be used. I met so many people practicing in private but never producing fruit in public with their spiritual gift. 1 Peter 4.10 says, God has given each of you gifts from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. You got to use it. If you don't use it, you'll lose it. You got to use it. That's what I tell about the budget and the youth ministry. I say, if you don't use it, you lose it. I'm going to spend that money on something else. So buy some pizza. If you don't use it, you lose it. How does this play out in Scripture? Acts chapter 3. Now we're going to get into it. Are you ready for the preaching? Do you believe that everybody is, is given a gift? Yeah. Acts chapter 3. You can begin to play. Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in a three o'clock prayer service. As they approached the temple, a man lame from birth was carried in. Each day, he was put beside the temple gate, the one they called the beautiful gate. I, I, I find it fascinating that he was carried in and left there to beg. What I do not want to do is surround myself with people who will capitalize on my condition and never believe for more for me. He had, he had surrounded himself with people that were okay with him just begging for money. I don't know about you, but I want to be around people that believe for more for this church that are not stuck in the status quo. You're not carrying me so that I could get some silver and gold. You're carrying me so that we can experience a miracle today. 
I don't want to surround myself with people who are capitalizing off my condition and are okay with where I'm at. I want people to stretch and to challenge and to get, I want people to say, you know what? I'm not leaving you here today like that. I'm not leaving you here today like that. He was carried to the temple every day. He had become so accustomed to his condition that it became his way of life. This is a man that was lame from birth. His ankles did not work. I don't want you to get so accustomed to the condition that people carry you around and you never experience the power of God and the gift of God. Somebody's getting saved right now. I don't ever want you to be carried in. He had an ugly disease by a beautiful gate so he could beg from the people going into the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them, for some money. Peter and John looked at him intently. And Peter said, look at us. The lame man looked at them eagerly, expecting some money. It's a dangerous game to lower your expectations in the presence of God. Some of y'all come in here, you just come here to check off a box. It's a dangerous game to lower your expectations for what God might do. We will not be a church that lowers our expectations just to have a cute little church service. We will not be a church that says, oh, that was just fine. As long as he's done by 1030, we'll be just fine. We will not lower our expectations to what we think. We will experience whatever God wants us to experience, and our expectations will always be exceeded in Jesus name he expected some money but the presence and power of God was on Peter and John why because in Acts chapter 2 they had encountered the Holy Spirit in the upper room and they were given the gift they had walked by this man many times he was carried there every day they would have gone to pray every day and at that moment the church was in a critical critical juncture because the Old Testament scholars and the New Testament activists were at odds with each other. And so Peter and John were focused on their argument that they had to go, the discussion that they were gonna have inside church. But can I tell you something? God will sometimes drop a miracle in the middle of your journey that was actually meant to display his power. Am I preaching to anybody today? Sometimes it's not about the argument you wanna have or the theological discussion. Sometimes preaching is not the answer. Sometimes the sermon is not the solution. Sometimes they need the power of God. I want you to notice they don't even pray for this guy. They don't even pray for him. Because when you got the power, you don't need prayer at times. Sometimes you got so much faith. This is what he said. But Peter said, I don't have any silver and gold, but I'll give you mm, what I have. I will give you what I have. I don't have any, so in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. You can't give people what you don't got. So he didn't have silver and gold, but what he had was the power and presence of an almighty God. I came to tell you today that if you get into the river of his presence, you can leave here with the power of God. Everybody can pray, but not everybody's got the power. I don't have silver and gold, but what I give, I give to you. Jesus Christ in Nazareth, he said, get up and walk. Then Peter took the lame man by the right hand. He made contact with his condition, which you should not have done going into the temple. And helped him up. And as he did, the man's feet and ankles became instantly healed and strengthened. He jumped up, stood on his feet, and began to walk. Then walking and leaping and praising God. I love it because I can guess that he had been sitting by this temple for decades, years, watching people properly walk into church just casually. And he's like, man, if they only knew what I wish I could do. See, you come in here and you make fun of other people, how they praise, but you don't understand. They, they had to work hard to get here. It says that he's beginning to leap because a lot of religious people would just walk in properly with all their suit and tie on. And they would just be very cordial and professional. He said, no, no, no. I just experienced the miracle of the power of God. I'm going to turn this thing into a leap. And I'm going to, I wish I could have. I wish I could have just jumped for years. But now that I can, I'm going to stand and I'm going to leap 
into the presence of God. I could have gone anywhere. I could have gone home. I could have gone to Golden Corral. But where did I decide to go? I decided to go into the temple of God. I decided to go into the presence of God. I decided to go to the miracle maker. When they realized that he was the lame beggar they had seen often at the beautiful gate, they were absolutely astounded. The gift of God will astound people that have gotten accustomed to the protocol, but so unaware of the presence. They all rushed out in amazement to Solomon's colonnade where the man was holding tightly to Peter and John. I believe some of you have came in here today you're one of the three people in that story. You're either Peter and John, and you need to be used by God to experience his power. Or maybe you're like the man who was lame from birth, and you just need some power. You, you, need, you need power is what you're missing. You've been using the rake, and God says, no, 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 I got power for you. I got power. And when you know, when you're operating in that grace gift, you go, you go from just laying around to watching people that are just, you know, he had been there his whole life. He was just laying there. He was just laying there. He was just laying there. He had been lame from birth. He had just been laying there. And they had walked by him several times saying, oh, that's just the lame man. That's just the lame beggar. But when you get the wind of God, when you get the breath of God, the presence of God. Oh, you begin to experience his power like never before. And the devil's going to try to stop you. He's going to try to keep you down. He's going to say, no, 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 no. But I came to tell you today that when God is for you, then who can be against you? He is a good God. He will lift you up when the devil tries to keep you down. They said you would never make it. They said your kid was not going to come home. But I want to let you know that by the power and presence of God, he says, get up in the name of Jesus. Begin to worship him. Begin to praise him for how good he is. Do not let the devil try to steal your joy today. It is the power and presence of God. Oh, you thought the cancer was going to kill you. You thought the diagnosis was going to kill you. But I want to let you know today that greater is he that is within me than he that is within the world. Can somebody give God some praise this morning? Would you lift your hands? Would you begin to shout unto God with a voice of triumph? He's a good God. 